All righty, it's just gone three past, which is our usual cue to get started. So welcome everybody. This is the Qbert community meeting. Today is the 4th of October. I'm as excited as you are. Um, once again, for anyone that has joined us late, um, I've got the meeting agenda in chat. It's also in the um, meeting invitation link. If you please put your name at the top of that where it says attendees uh, right here. Uh, that would be wonderful. So typically we, um, and we will again today, um, we ask anyone that is joining us for the first time, if you would like to introduce yourself. And this includes people that have potentially, you know, joined in the past, but haven't wanted to introduce themselves for whatever reason. So now is your opportunity. If you'd like to take it, I'll go to mute and you can just jump in. Really nobody or everybody's already been here for ages. Where's my camera? Hey guys. I'm MJ, basically been following Kubert while my previous days at Red Hat, basically joining to see where the community is now these days, where the project is just after like one of one dot zero releases. We might have some internal uses where I'm now, basically. So just want to see what's the pulse. Right on. Welcome, Jay. And um, are you at liberty to say where you are now? At the moment, Lithuania, Vilnius, Cast AI. It's a cloud cost optimization startup. Okay, cool. And uh, did you want to talk about like how you might be uh, using Qbert either now or in the future? Uh, honestly, we don't know yet. Basically, we have a use case for virtualization. We have in a Kubernetes use case usage internally for all our development flows and everything. And we kind of don't want to drag in open stacks or VMware of the world to the stack. So we basically exploring what's 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 there. And as I'm an ex Red Hatter, basically, I've been following the Qbert before. So I'm just, that's one of the options on a table, basically, let's see. All right, well, um, yeah, I hope you find what you're looking for. Is there anyone else who is new or would like to take the opportunity to introduce themselves before we get started in the meeting? Yeah, one of these days I should introduce myself. Could today be that day? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I I think I'll wait for next week. All right. I mean, that needs no introduction. Um, very well. Uh, speaking of next week, I will need um, someone to put their hand up to host next week's meeting. Um, in fact, I'll be away for a little bit over the next couple of weeks and various things. Um, uh, you don't have to do it in here. You can just ping me on Slack if you would like. Um, that's totally fine. But yeah, I'll need probably one to four people over the next, um, until November, basically. You can put me in queue for wherever somebody doesn't kill me. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Itama, I'm just going to mute your line. So I've learned I know how to do that. There we go. All right, let's get started. Um, and yeah, if anyone else feels like, Alexander, if you feel like introducing yourself later in this meeting or anyone else, um, you can just uh, jump right in and we can take care of that. So now we'll have a look at the current schedule. Uh, next week, um, the 10th of August, is our V1.1 feature freeze, which is kind of a big deal. Um, so yeah, if you've got anything that is... Um, unmerged and you really want it in you've got approximately seven days six days seven days depending on where you are um yeah so please be aware uh, i will also uh, this isn't necessarily an announcement because it's not entirely finalized but we may well be moving the um the release date of ga nothing else will change as far as i know um, or we might move it to the following week so that it coincides with KubeCon so as to get like a better um, zhuzh 
uh, with the CNCF and the the, the KubeCon attendance. Um, so that's it. Not entirely finalized when it is. Um, I'll let people know on the mailing list either way. The other thing I wanted to do was have a look at upcoming events. This Anyone who's um, been here in the last couple of weeks shouldn't be surprised by any of this. Um, scale, if anyone is going to be in the Los Angeles area in the middle of March, um, there's also a co-located KCD and DevOps days. We've got KCD Oslo for anyone in the north of Europe. And uh, a really big one, KubeCon Cloud Native Con in Paris, France, also in the middle of March. Um, they all have CFPs that are currently open and are will will finish in November. Um, also, it's it hasn't been announced yet. They're still figuring out what the rooms are, but uh, FOSDEM will be happening once again next year at the start of February. I think it's the third and the fourth. Um, there is plan to have a virtualization and infrastructure as a service dev room. Hopefully it gets accepted. Um, I'll pass on those details when they're made available. Um, but yeah, it never hurts to think in advance uh, if you're interested in going to FOSDEM and talking that stuff. Um, yeah, and just to highlight, if anyone's going to be at KubeCon, we've got a bunch of stuff, KubeCon North America, that is, in November. We'll have a project meeting, um, and we finally have a room for that. It'll be at the Hilton Level 3 across the road from the convention center. We've got a maintainer talk. Uh, we've got a, an entry in the project update keynote, and we'll have a Kubert boost in the project pavilion, so you can drop by at any time, and you'll probably find me there. And Daniel also will be presenting in Italy at SFSCon. Uh, all right. We have a very light agenda and open floor at the moment. Um, uh, that's just one thing. But if there is anything, uh, if there is anything that you, you could think of or would you would like to bring up, it is not too late. You can put it there. And um, yeah, if, if it gets missed, just jump in at the end and we'll return to it and have a look at it. Um, yeah, just checking chat. Itama, yes, your name is mentioned. I uh, just was going to mute you, but then we had a mute fight. So that, that's the only reason your name is mentioned. Uh, oh, I'll give Jed a second. Oh, I can just stop talking. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that might be easy. All right, you've got it. Yeah, you, you mentioned potentially move, uh, pushing uh, GA for one, one, uh, one week later. Uh, could we consider pushing feature freeze forward too and the RCs, like everything? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, I can uh, raise that with the other project maintainers and ask them what they think of that. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to be able to give. And like I said, this was that was just a it was a suggestion in order to take care of KubeCon. Uh, I will ask. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Unmute. Speaking of suggestions, uh, we had some people from the community uh, come through and ask if we could have a new section added. Um, and I thought it was a wonderful idea, so we're going to give it a trial this week. It is, um, yeah, about flaky test fixes as a way of promoting um, some of the great work that gets done by the community in order to fix flaky tests. Um, and it's also, I guess, an opportunity to potentially see how some of this stuff does get fixed, which might, um, uh, what's the word, preemptively prompt the fixes happening in the flaky test in the, the test in the first place. I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, so we'll get to that in a second. We shall move on to these two pull requests. Make sure that no one has. Oh, okay. We don't look at this. This has an LGTM. Um, if anyone is interested in reviewing, however, uh, we do have a, it's only had one review from Ryan just an hour ago, um, making a builder image. Um, but we don't need to all look at it here. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
we have a question in chat, which is there a link somewhere for roadmap or is it GitHub milestone managed? Um, we do not have a roadmap necessarily. That is something that uh, we've been actively talking about the last little while. Um, and the likely uh, mechanism we'll use, yes, is GitHub milestones. Uh, we're not entirely sure the, the hows and the what's just yet, but it is um, it is something that we're, we're uh, very aware there's a good need for it and we'd very much like to have it um, and accurate as well. Cool. So usual flow is like if we find something or need to find out if it's being planned or exists or on the people's minds is GitHub issues? Exactly. Well, uh, probably uh, to see what's happening would be to go to the um, community, the Qvert community repo, and you'll see in that um, a whole bunch of design proposals. Okay. The PRs that are open are still under discussion with the um, with the community and you also see the ones that have been accepted kind of recently and those are the ones that will be uh, the proposals been accepted cool. we actively work on okay thank you oh, you're welcome um there was something i wanted to it's this one so i came across this from a linked bug i think it was linked bug and it well it looked interesting enough. It has had it has some has had has had some attention, but it looked like something that I should be making the community aware of. Um, so, in a way, this is a um, a design proposal by another name because its its purpose as a PR is not to be merged, um, and it seems to be a discussion point for various things um, about running Kubert on S three ninety X. Uh, so if uh, that uh, calls to your attention, then by all means, have a look at this. Uh, there's um, links as well down here in one of the comments, which is how I found out about it. Um, yeah. That is that. From the mailing list, um, Brian Carey wrote a really nice uh, trip report from his experience with Flock. Uh, very cool and um, yeah, a very pleasant surprise to hear that uh, it wasn't just his talk that mentioned Qbert, but a bunch of other people mentioned it and also in conversations afterwards, including the um, Fedora and CentOS testing farm and the Fedora Cloud Seek, interesting in targeting Qbert environments. Um, yeah, so that's very encouraging. And thank you very much, Brian, if you're here or watching um, for writing that report, it's great to read. Three bugs. This was opened uh, yesterday. Um, let's see, there's a uh, dead. So that means very little to me. Um, but hopefully it means more to other people, and possibly this wasn't linked, um, is anyone able to help out with this in a meaningful way? Um, I'm just going to, because I can see his name, Stu. Sorry, I was muted. What's up? Um, yeah, uh, is does this speak to you in a way that um, you're able to take care of it? Uh, um, so the bindings are native to the kubevert code base or this this is the kubevert python client correct uh looks like yeah 3.9 i'd have to double check i don't think this is part of the official code base isn't it okay.
not i i don't know well uh, i guess it's with the q q me there yeah. yeah. queen you image got it that, all right well yeah, i will follow up and see what we can do can i uh cc you into this sure wonderful thank you uh, yes yes dot Alrighty. AMD CPU not support nesting when CPU model set to host model. Um, problem creating VM. Other node Intel CPU. Fine. I'm going to change CPU model to house pass through VMs AMD CPU nested works. 1.26 and container D. This sounds like something for the um, the compute team, does it not? Uh, I'm reading this carefully and I'm wondering if the node is actually configured correctly because the complaint is that one node works, one doesn't. Uh, in general, for nesting to work, you have to have it enabled as a kernel module. You have to have the sys control setting set correctly. Um, and if I'm seeing correctly, so it's saying there's no dev KVM inside the VM. Am I reading that correctly? So that means the first level nesting didn't work. And that would be where I would look. So I don't think that's necessarily something Kubert can help with, uh, but we can see if we can guide this individual to a better result. All righty, thank you for the context. Um, do you want me to CC you on this or you want to jump on it from the agenda? Uh, sure, I CC me. Okay, thank you. And just one more. So that no one's looked at it since I started. All righty. And let's cover all of the host devices. Let's scroll up. Yep. Something, something. Also pass through. And this covers one of the devices. Version one, one point two seven. Not to put everything onto you today, Stu. Um, but this seems like a compute issue. Yeah, definitely compute issue. Um, I'm trying in the back of my mind to remember who worked on this. I, I have some names, but I don't think in the room right now. So if you sign it to me and then I will follow up with making sure the right person gets it. All righty. Thank you. Hey, I'm I'm just happy you're not trying to assign them all the things. I last week it was Igor. Um, unfortunately, took the ball. So this seems to be an unfortunate trend. Um, but at, at least it's getting assigned, right? Oh, and Alice has suggested. I'm not sure if this is for the bug that we're looking at. Can suggest to run vert host validate. And link to Lidvert man page. I think that was for the previous issue. Oh, that was the previous one. Where okay. the, the KVM device wasn't being passed to the guest. Okay. Um, in which case, uh, Stu, there is a potential clue in uh, chat from Liche. Thank you. All righty, those are our bugs. And now, yeah, we've got this, this new section, uh, flaky test fixes. Um, so this one, I had a quick look at, and I am, it was for the other one. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, I'm very much out of my depth, look, depth looking at stuff like this. Um, but hopefully um, this speaks to other people in the room. 
since this was a test, this was most what last week. I really like this comment. Uh, winner flake of the year, and all that changed in it was very simple changing this in a whole bunch of different places it seems to have been the problem. Um, if anyone would like to take the opportunity to explain any additional context that I am obviously unable to add to this. Um, you are well, great. Seems like already off mute. My bad. Um, so this was actually a really um, sneaky bug. Federico is the one that located it. But basically what's going on is we were not initializing a variable correctly. Uh, the variable existed because it was being used as a global error variable somewhere in the module. And so Golang didn't complain and absolutely did compile when we were um, trying to use this error variable. But the problem was we, so, so the usual pattern is that you do error equal and then some uh, command that would return an error potentially, uh, but we were not doing that. And so we were just simply accidentally checking the error variable and erroring out if it were, um, you know, if it, if it happened to contain a non-null value. So the trouble was, so some random test had nothing to do with what we were looking at, created an error, maybe actually correctly as part of whatever that test was up to, but we were looking at the error variable and immediately failing. So it was just a complete bad code logic. And it was so sneaky and so hard to find because it compiled and it looked right. And so kudos to Federico for catching this and, and solving a real thorn in our side over the years here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, Federico. Um, and yeah, hopefully um, this helps us in the future as well, potentially catch other sneaky bugs. Um, so this section, I think, is more of a uh, self-add, or if you come across, if you review something, um, which happens to be a, a sneaky, flaky test fix or along those lines, um, please add them to this document so that we can, you know, not everyone's um, super keen on self-promotion. Um, in fact, this, I don't think any of us are potentially, um, in which case, um, by all means, we might need to have other people to review it that recognize the um, tremendous impact that it might have and kind of add it here just so that we can see it and say, hey, look, thank you very much for uh, fixing that pain in the A. Um, that brings us to the end of our agenda. I can't see anything that has been added. Um, I'll give a, a couple of seconds now, just in case anyone has just thought of something or wants to add anything to what we've talked about so far. All righty. Um, which case, I think that will adjourn today's meeting. Thank you very much for everyone who attended and contributed. And again, thank you, Federico, for fixing that issue. Um, well, I won't see you next week, but I hope everyone has a lovely day, uh, weekend. And uh, yeah, uh, good luck out there with whatever you're doing. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.